Hi. In the previous video, I outlined how to set up your environment for Amiga C cross development. Building on top of that, I decided to start a small series about Amiga hardware programming in C, with the goal to write a rudimentary game. This video assumes that the audience has some familiarity with programming in C, and I will not attempt to make this an introductory C course. In general, there are a couple of ways to program the Amiga hardware. While you could of course use assembly language, you can in fact use any language that allows you to read and write to and from Amiga memory address directly, like for example C or even BASIC. Let's have a look at a simple example how a piece of assembly code could be written in a different language. Here we see the classic wait for mouse button loop in both assembly and C. Well, for this particular example, the assembly code will be most likely the more efficient one. The C version does roughly the same and might be a little easier to understand for the general programmer. As software projects increase in size, this effect becomes more apparent and in general it is easier to comprehend and maintain a larger code base that is more structured and easy to read. If you are one of those individuals who can read large amounts of assembly code with ease, I just wanted to let you know that I hate you. For illustration purposes, here's the code for Amiga Basic. Amiga Basic is unfortunately incredibly slow, which makes it not really a great tool for interacting with the hardware directly. However, it was admittedly not really designed for that purpose, and it's cool that it is possible at all. We won't bother with Basic for the rest of the course, because I just don't use it all that often. Programming via Amiga hardware requires detailed knowledge about the hardware architecture, the memory organization, the operating system, and how it all ties together. Without documentation, this would be a very difficult task, and for this reason, Commodore released a series of technical documentation, which consists of the hardware reference manual, which describes the hardware aspects, and the ROM kernel manuals, which focus on the operating system. For programming the Amiga hardware, the hardware reference manual is the most important source of information. But in order to create programs that work well across most classic Amiga systems and operating system versions, one will have to look at other documentation as well. The hardware reference manual, for the most part, ignores the existence of the operating system and often works with absolute memory addresses, which makes development and testing harder. Shown in this picture is my personal set of reference manuals, which I have purchased from various online sources over the years. The documentation is also available online or can be purchased in electronic form with the Amiga Developer CD from various retailers that carry Amiga related items. Let's revisit the mouse button example in the context of a complete program. According to the hardware reference manual, the left mouse button signal is mapped to bit 6 in a register in one of the Amiga's two CIA chips. As you can see, I have assigned the address of the peripheral data register A of the CIA chip A to a volatile variable. We are repeatedly checking its status in a loop. An optimizing C compiler would likely optimize the termination condition in a way that its status would be read at most once since the program logic itself does not modify it. To tell the compiler that this variable might be changed outside of the program's execution context, we mark it as volatile, so it does not try to make this optimization. I should also point out that by default, bit 6 in this register has the value 1 to indicate that the mouse button is not pressed, so we need to check for bit 6 to become 0. In order to compile this example program with VBCC, we need to let the compiler know about the path to the Amiga NDK include files. On my system, I have set that as an environment variable because all my build scripts rely on it. Here is another example, which is similar to the one Photon of Scoopex shows in part 2 and 3 of his hardware programming series. As you can see, I have set the register address for reading the raster position to another volatile variable in order to have the program wait for specific beam positions. 
I am also declaring an external variable which gives us access to the custom ship's registers as a C structure and which our C environment can automatically provide. If you want to know more about the details of this program, I recommend to have a look at Proton's excellent hardware programming course. I intended to show this example primarily to demonstrate reading and writing the custom ship registers programmatically. At a later time, I will also demonstrate the usage of copper lists to wait for certain VASA positions and interact with the custom chip registers. To compile the above program, we need to provide a few more options. Since I use single line commands, I need to tell the compiler that we want to use the C99 standard. And we also want to link with the Amiga library to have the custom variable automatically placed in our program. Let's run the example program in the emulator. As you can see, this will display a white line that moves vertically between two fixed positions. We achieve this by waiting for a line position that is increased or decreased every frame and setting its background color to white for the entire line. After that line, we reset the background color to the Workbench 1.3 default color. When we click the left mouse button, program exit. And this is the end of this episode. In the next video I will demonstrate initialization and cleanup in a program. And we will also have a look at copper lists. You can find the source code for the example programs in the GitHub repository for this series. And you can also find the links to the references in this video's description. Until then, hope to see you next time. Thanks for checking in.